Dave Blackamoto here, your uncrowned 145 pound champion with Captain New Zealand, the CKB team leader, Dan Hangman Hooker. How are you, Dan? I'm very well, sir. Yeah, you look very good. You look healthy, you look full of energy. You look like you're full of life at 155 pounds. First of all, you're CKB's team captain and one of the first Kiwis to make it into the UFC and making your debut in 2014. You've been in the core of the team 10 plus years. How proud are you of the progress the team has made when you look back to 2014 compared to today, all four of you on one of the biggest cards of the year? Yeah, I'd say just, you know, New Zealand's progression um, in mixed martial arts as a whole, I'd say has gone, it's crazy. It's crazy from where it started, from where I started, um, you know, it was such a, like it was such a niche thing. Like I couldn't even, when I was first started training and first started fighting, you couldn't even go out and tell people that you was fought in MMA or, or ask people if they watched the UFC because no one had, like it was, it was not popularized. And so now to have um, all these Kiwi fighters in the UFC, to have, um, you know, Israel Head and Shoulders is one of the biggest stars in, in if not the biggest star in mixed martial arts and representing New Zealand on the global stage is, is um, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. How special has this camp been for you being in the trenches with, with uh, all the boys? It's been very cool. There's like a lot of things that have gone on um, and, and changed behind the scenes and, and kind of changed um, in my mindset in that. And it's just like, uh, yeah, it's just been cool. Because myself, I've just gone back to back to basics, just being a fighter, just being one of the boys, just being a soldier, and just showing up to the gym every day and doing what I'm told. And it's um, the like dividends of that is uh, are definitely showing. Like I feel like I've made some pretty big developments in this camp. But it's just been so easy having everyone. Like it's easy when you're feeding off everyone else's energy. And you show up to the gym and like everyone's excited to help you prepare when when everyone's on the same page and everyone's going into it like mentally at the same time everyone around you is like supporting you and pushing you forward i don't think people realize um i don't think people realize like how important that is it's definitely not uh an individual sport as advertised in in terms of the preparation and that um this camp has been ridiculous it's been it's been taking everything to a whole nother level the training the support um i think like COVID times definitely made everyone like appreciate what we have and and appreciate just having our friends around us and our family around us and the playing field too because if you look at oceania teams during COVID, compared to what you know u.s teams had to go through in terms of obstacles of training camps and logistics the living the, the playing field was not level at all nah nah definitely wasn't but that's like that's the funny thing about our sport no one really cares like you just <laughs> it's a it's like a pass fail um it's a part like everyone's instant reaction is like always emotional and, and emotionally charged but that all that all fades uh, when it comes down to it in our sport the most important thing um, is winning you win you get all the marbles and you get to progress so like focus on the future it's 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 just win I think coming in here for all four of us it's it's not win but it's just win win at all costs so Eugene made this training camp a lot harder uh, from my observations you welcomed all the blood and guts and eating glass with with open arms was that you just embracing, you know, you being the team captain and leading by example, or do you just enjoy that extra blood and guts of, of training, the, the increase in intensity? No, nah, it's definitely, um, definitely just, just genuine. That's my genuine, that's my genuine, like, there's no, there's no place that you get to be realer than, than in the gym when you're crashing into each other and working hard and pushing yourself to that level, uh, that extreme level. But I, I relished it. I relished, I relished the challenge and, and 
yeah, you, you, you appreciate it. You, appre you appreciate the time that we have right now where you're pushing your body to the absolute extreme because there's absolutely no reason for a human to do that. There's, there's outside, of, outside of this, outside of moments like this and, and opportunities like this, Madison Square Garden, four Kiwis, like it's, a, it's a crazy opportunity that's going to go down in history for, for an incredibly long period of time. So, yeah, you'd like relish that opportunity. There's no other reason to, to work that hard, to, to, be in, to be the fittest you've ever been in your life and to push your body to absolute failure. There's, there's no reason to do that outside of this. So for, it's like a handful of times in your life you're going to get to do it. So I, I am experienced enough to appreciate it while it's here. How does a high-level athlete like yourself adjust their mindset after a couple of losses? How do you reset and get back after it? Um, it's just like working through them and, and progressing. I'd say like that's one thing that I've been able to do throughout my career. And, and the real um, like crux of why I, I'm not too shy about taking risky challenges is because of, of like my mindset and my ability um, to get back on track very fast. Obviously like, I'm like a sore loser. I'm not a good loser. Like I've lost many times, but I'm I'm really not a good loser. But it's the the amount of time you spend, like if you dwell on it for too long, you're just really going around. You just really go around in a cycle and just react to it, and react like then people say negative stuff, then you react to their reactions, and you find yourself just treading water. You're you're not going anywhere. So once I set my mind to a new goal and a new target then you get to start um, like creating. You get to start creating something new. You get to like this whole, this whole thing is about like creating memories, creating emotions in people, creating feelings in other people. Like if you're able to do that, that is progress. And you start setting your mind on a new task and, and it's about creating and moving forward and, and improving yourself instead of um, dwelling on it for too long and beating yourself up and going around in circles that really um, that really just does yourself a disservice I watched your interview on submission radio and I really enjoyed it you gave some great insights and um, uh, I encourage everyone to go and listen to it too you talked about your ego death after your back-to-back -back losses and you accepting it and from what I got from the interview was that you made improvements to your mental and your physical do you feel like those improvements will also translate into your performance um that's the thing i guess i would say about like the mental and physical improvements i feel like i've got everything in the exact right place it needs to be and nothing needs to be forced i'm not putting any pressure on myself to go out there and doing anything amazing or something like that um yeah, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life and I'm just prepared to go out there and just what will be will be. But you know, head and shoulders, um, we're artists. This is, this is martial arts, you know what I mean? I think um, like the fans and stuff like that spend too long. To me, it's art. To me, we go out there and, and we're, we're creating something beautiful. Um, People spend too long saying, oh, no, it's like, it's not like you see a, like a Van Gogh and a um, Picasso and the fans of both of them are like, oh, no, this is, uh, Picasso's shit. Picasso is terrible. Like, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Like, art is art. Everyone, some people like some things, some people like other things. It's, it's just a, a very crazy sport, which I feel like, the culture in general just needs to, to yeah, more more like an artist culture. Um, and, and just a certain level of respect is like required for for the art itself. Is the featherweight a closed chapter now? Closed. Closed? Burn the book. Could you have done this intent as hell trading camp at 145 pounds? Um, I think I'm crazy enough to. I think. <laughs> I know, uh, yeah, I know you also don't like making it's excuses. A, it's a, but it's entirely like a mind over matter thing. Yeah. Like the, that, that 
aspect of my personality has got me like consistently um, got me into trouble throughout my career because like my mind convinces my body that it's um, so easy and that there's no any like my mind is so much stronger than my body that I end up um, in these kind of situations where I'm like this is easy I can do this again no, like I can definitely do this like make the 145 for fun in in three weeks like it's a uh, um, yeah it's 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 and the answer to that is like surrounding yourself by the people that you trust right like the people like Eugene like Twist like Andre that are going to advise you the right things. They're the people that are actually see you day in, day out in the gym, and they're just like, you perform better here. You need to be doing this. And, for, and for me, yeah, for me to, to humble myself enough to listen, um, I think that's like the real solution to that kind of problem. Yeah, and entering this stage of your career, it sounds like you're gonna be more strategic and uh, methodology. What the fuck is that? Method. <laughs> Methodological. Mr. What? Or is that a conversation with Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're going to be more more strategic and you know plan things out more instead of just being you know a bit of a cowboy. Am I right in saying that as you enter this next stage in your, it's just, in your career? Yeah, yeah, I would say I've I've matured. I've used those kind of. Um, those, those challenging experiences in my life to, to improve myself and, and to mature as a person, to mature um, emotionally, to, a, to mature physically, to just handle those kind of situations um, with a more leveled head. Sounds like a very smart thing to do. Uh, you're facing Claudio Pulis. Uh He's a nearby submission specialist. How did this fight come about? He said that he asked for you specifically. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure because obviously Ash and Eugene, they handle all the management side of things now. Um, Which is something that you've, you've also made a change in your career and now you have... Yeah, before that, like my UFC career, I would deal directly with the UFC and, and kind of just... Um, it's funny, like, I'm going to go back, I'll go, I'll probably, when it's all said and done, I can go back and like show everyone, because I'm pretty sure that's illegal to show like emails. But like, well, just to transcribe my conversations of how these fights came about and just how, like, how complex people think it is and then how, how simple, like, some of these fights... Give me an example. Some of these fights are just single words. Some of these fights, are like, Sean Shelby will send me a name and a date and it will just be like, yeah, cheers. Like, you're that's a fucking it. bounty hunter. <laughs> you're, 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 like, you're yeah, cheers. But it leads me to like, the Arnold Allen one. I didn't even ask where it was, which was my major, <laughs> which was a, a major flaw in the plan when I found out it was uh, close to 40 hours travel away. That was. Um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like people already love you enough because you're a fighter's fighter, but like, you know, give me these extra insights on how you just, you know, one word here, one word here, like. There, you you, you are for real when you say win and wear, like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, um, I feel like of of fighters like that mindset and that mentality, I feel like I've done um, incredibly incredibly well for the amount of risk that I took. I've I, like because I see it firsthand. I see it for myself. The amount of fighters with that mindset. Um, who get taken advantage of because obviously like management teams find them, um, promoters find them. They find a guy that's like tough, he's, he's exciting and he'll fight absolutely anyone. So they continue to like abuse that and use that. So it's like I can see that now um, after going through that kind of process about and, and just the benefit of, of having, putting the right people in the right places, people that you trust to make the right decisions for you. Does this matchup give you deja vu vibes about your debut? In your debut, you faced a heel hook specialist and you sliced him up with elbows every time he dove for your legs. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I would say the same, because um, I remember that kid and I feel like, I feel like that, that kid would you would absolutely have to, like I was 24 years old at the time making my debut, you would absolutely have to have to kill that kid 
to get him out of there. There's absolutely no way. Like he dropped down for that heel hook. He caught my heel. He, I heard my knee pop like four or five times. And I was trying to convince myself going into the fight. I was like, if you get caught in the, I was, this is a conversation I'm having with my inner self. I'm like, if you get caught in the heel hook, just tap, it's not the biggest deal. All right, you can, you just tap, like trying to convince myself. He falls back for the heel hook. I'm not slipping out. He starts like cranking it on. My knee like pops like four or five times. Like he got stunned as well when he like looked up and I was just like, I remember thinking in my head and, and me talking to my other self, just saying, fuck it, let it snap. I was like, let oh, it snap. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna hit him with it. And I, like, I did, there was just no way I was tapping to that in, in my home city in front of my people. It's my UFC debut. And it's things like that, that could have, it's those turning points. And I've had a number of them throughout your career where, where things could have gone one way, but you just bit down and sucked it up and, and you progressed further. And that's like happened a number of times where guys have had me hurt, guys have had me down. Um, and you just, you just find a way to win. You just find a way to get it out and, and just, not having to rely on that toughness so heavily will be great, but it's always there. You have great banter. Claudio is from Peru. English is a second language. And I don't think he's one to, you know, uh, go back and forth with someone and like, you know, build the fight and uh, develop the marketing aspects of it. Is that, is that, is the type of, you know, bad blood fight something that you want to tick off your list before, you know, you, you hang it up and, and have you know that 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 level of animosity going into a belt? Um, I think it's like with anything that I do, it uh, it has to be natural. Yeah. It has to be like it just has to be. I'm kind of just like that. I wouldn't mind like it would it would come down to the other guy. It would come down to like I will um, yeah I'll respond how anyone comes at me. But from what I can see, like this kid's. He's a good kid. He's got nothing um, bad to say. I feel like this 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 fight has enough of a storyline, and you know, with the four boys, the Kiwis coming over, and us looking to go four and zero in New York, like that's that's a huge storyline. You seem to be doing a lot of media lately with all the shows that you go on. Fans also recognize how much of a, an MMA junkie that you are because you know so much about you know the past and the present. Is commentating, broadcasting, being going into that role something that you want to do later in your career? You seem like you're natural already, you know what I mean? Nah. Nah, because then you're like, um, then I feel like you have to stick to the script. Then I have to, then I've, like, especially uh, with the ESPN, and I'm not critiquing them anything whatsoever, but me, like, personally, I don't like, I don't like doing it. I don't like following the script. I don't like putting a suit on and acting a certain way or saying a certain um, kind of thing. Like, I want to I want to watch a fight and if someone I know wants to bring me on their show and ask me for an honest opinion, then I'm happy to come on and give them an honest opinion. But to have that opinion like, oh, Dan, do you think you'd be able to say that, like, I don't... Um, yeah, you, you want to be free. To do that. Oh, yeah, I'd prefer not don't to Don't want to be do put that. on occasion and have an earpiece and someone being like, don't say this, don't say that. I get that. There's some fan questions for you. There's some fun ones. All right. What are some of your favorite fights as a fan and a competitor? All time. Some of your favorites. It's too hard to pick a top. Just do some of your favorites. Um, I would say John Jones, Gustafson. That's probably one of my favorite. That's probably my favorite fight um, of all time. Shit. Rank one. What about as a competitor that you've had? Of my own fights? Um... You're asking me to compare my art, you know what I mean? You're asking me to compare like which one of my, which one of my paintings I like the most. You like them all? They're all different. They're all different. You don't have one that's, that's a little bit extra close to your heart? Nah, there's too many. There's too many beautiful moments. All right. Did you ever find the person who threw rubbish, I think it was banana peel, at you when you were doing, doing hill sprints? I did not. But hey... I try not to, try not to, I don't hold a grudge too long. You know what I mean? In actual fact, the guy's probably upset. You know what I mean? Maybe his, maybe his missus left him that morning for someone that's uh, in shape. You know what I mean? So I, I try not to hold a grudge for too long. 
All right. Thank you for your time, Dan. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Good questions. No, I'll give that a tick, mate. Hey, guys. What's up? Izzy here. Like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoy this video.